Hi guys, my name's Doug. Welcome to My Messy Garage. It's almost May here in Northwestern Ontario. Matter of fact, the day this video comes out will be May 1st. And that means it's almost time to start getting out on the lake. Water's still a little on the hard side right now, but it's getting close. And uh, I got a couple of projects I'd like to get sorted out before boating season starts. Those of you who've been watching my last few videos may have noticed this old beast kicking around in the corner and uh, it's kind of jammed in here out of the way at the moment. But it is a 1971 18 horse Evinrood and I would like to get it fixed up and running. I've got a uh, nice little boat that this would just work perfect on. Before we start working on outboards for this season, I'd really like to put together an outboard stand. I've seen a pretty nice design kicking around uh, that I'd like to try and reproduce with the parts I have available. As you can see, we've got a couple of two by fours here. Let me put you in a stand and we'll do some paper assisted design. Show you what I have in mind. I was gonna draw it with a pen, but we'll use a Sharpie just so that it shows up better. Essentially what we're gonna do is have an upright with a couple of boards on it that we can clamp the uh, motor to. Then we're going to have uh, a couple of bottoms here. This of course is not to scale and a couple of gussets. The idea will be that we don't need this to be as long sticking out this way because there's not really much weight tipping that way. Most of the weight is gonna wanna come back this way. So we'll make this, you know, cut that off there and put wheels on the bottom. One other thing that I want to uh, try and maintain, I've got a, I think it's a 38 inch door, uh, man door on my garage, and I would like to be able to take the outboard stand in and out of the garage without having to, you know, massage it around to, uh, to get it to go. So what do we need? We need some screws, probably some three inch deck screws, uh, probably gonna need some two and a half inch as well. For the cross piece here, I think I'd like to put carriage bolts through that. So we're gonna need some um, three and a half inch carriage. And I need a new skill saw. My, uh, my skill saw is worn out. There's my shopping list. My chicken scratch, show you what the plan is. Let me run to the store, get some of these supplies, and I'll bring you back when I'm ready to start laying out and cutting some wood. There's the new saw. Uh, because it came from Canadian Tire, I probably paid way too much for uh, what it is. It's a nice heavy duty looking saw at least. We'll see how it works. Hopefully it does the job. We've got our uh, baseboards cut out here. Obviously, uh, I'm going to put these a little further apart when I build the unit and uh, we're going to come up I'm going to say 12 inches back from the front and then we've got 24 inches hanging out for the back. That gives us a nice uh, tip over towards the rear. I've got about 31 inches in my man door. I measured it. I thought it was wider than that, but that's what the measurement comes out as. 31 inches is actually a good width. It'll allow me to take this rack in and out the man door, but at the same time, it's going to leave me 24 inches between the bottoms of the rails and uh, 24 inches is the width of one of those large um, plastic you know, 55 gallon drums. So theoretically I could take, cut the top off one of those big drums, fill it with water, put the motor down in there on this rack and it should work well for uh, motor testing. I've also got the option of using earmuffs, but uh, on smaller motors, using a uh, large drum seems to work a little bit better than the muffs anyways. Let me uh, cut out a little bit more material here and I'll bring you guys back when I uh, am ready to start assembling some stuff. I've got most of the wood cut out here. We've got our, uh, our two uprights, our two longitudinals, and I've got three cross pieces cut out here. Two uh, I'm going to use to clamp the motor to, one I'm going to use to run across. It'll uh, give me a little bit more rigidity for the uprights and it'll also tie the uh, the base together nicely. Uh, we'll 
put everything together what I've got cut out so far I still got a bunch more scrap 2x4 kicking around so I'm not beyond putting a little bit more bracing on this thing obviously I'm gonna have to put some gussets on etc but I got a whole bunch of scrap blocks on the floor cutoffs from this scrap that uh, we can use to uh, make gussets out of let me um, get set up here and we'll start screwing some stuff together one little side note this is not in any way shape or form a uh, a paid advertisement i have to admit i'm kind of impressed with this uh, circular saw that i picked up i figured it was going to be a cheap piece of junk you know something that should have been worth about 60 bucks but it really cuts nice now it's got a good brand new blade on it and uh, it is a larger size saw so it sure chews through a two by four nice i think it was a good investment much better than the old little uh five inch or whatever the heck it was that i used to have anyways on to assembly plan is to come back from the front 12 inches already gonna mark there mark this one back 12. Back when I did my Lowe's shopping spree, I picked up some number two square impact driver uh, bits. And uh, of course, buying Robertson screwdriver bits in the States is unusual. So I'll give these a try and see how they work with the uh, Robertson screws. They seem to fit on pretty good. Well, the screws definitely take a good bite. I measured the 18 horse Evinrude that I'm planning on uh, putting up on this rack and uh, the distance from the top of the uh, the transom clamp to the bottom is uh, is six inches and if we go that's six inches right there if I put a one inch gap between the two two by fours basically that puts the bottom of the transom clamp right in the middle of that two by four that gives us a little bit of room for smaller uh, outboards I've got a, a three horse and uh, I got some other small ones that I want to work on in the not too distant future and um, it gives us room for if we have some slightly larger ones if uh, need be I could tack another two by four on uh, the bottom of this but again this isn't designed to be a, a super heavy duty outboard test stand it's just designed uh, for the smaller stuff that i have i think what we're going to do now is put the uh, the casters on that i picked up what i've got here are four casters that came off of a harbor freight moving dolly if you have access to a harbor freight store and you need some dollies for some kind of project and these are uh, a four-way swivel one of the suggestions that i've heard over the years is you buy one of their cheap you know ten dollar moving dollies and uh, you end up saving about five bucks on the price five to ten bucks on the price of um, what it would cost to buy four rather inexpensive dollies usually they're about five bucks a piece so 20 bucks for four and you pay ten bucks for the moving dolly and uh, take it apart reuse the wheels so that's what we're going to do here that's where these wheels came from they even come with mounting bolts that uh, should go through the 2x4 quite nice let me uh, dig up a drill bit and we'll mark the holes and uh, get some wheels put on this thing before we get going here i'm going to ask you guys for a big favor uh, right now as of when this video is coming out i'm just shy of 400 subscribers for the channel and uh, my second anniversary is going to be coming up in a couple of months and it's kind of a, a, a milestone for uh, YouTube to hit your uh, 500 subscribers they give you access to the community postings when that happens and I would really like to be able to do that before my second anniversary of the channel so I know uh, not all of you want to keep watching my videos you don't necessarily want to come back but it uh, doesn't really cost you anything to subscribe and uh, maybe you'll find some more content of mine that you like. Anyways, I'd appreciate it if you could uh, smash that subscribe button for me. Thank you very much. Well guys, there we go. I think we're successful.
Got the old 18 horse up on the uh, test rack and seems to be good and solid with that size of a motor on there. I don't know that I'd be wanting to, to put a 100 horse on that by any means, but this seems to work quite nicely for a 20. A little bit of a teaser for what we've got to come up. Got a well ignored outboard motor that needs to have a, a little bit of TLC done here. Uh, this thing has sat for a number of years just in behind the garage. I've got a sneaking suspicion that we've got a, a mouse house up inside the cowl. There's a little bit of uh, fuzz down on the floor there that came out of it. I know for sure it needs a shift dog and I guarantee it needs a water pump. But uh, pulling on the cord, the, uh, the power head isn't stuck and uh, it does shift uh, through the gears. So hopefully we can make this thing fire up and run. And if we get it running good, maybe we'll get uh, into the cosmetics a little bit and see if we can make it look more like it did when it got delivered from Eaton's. Thanks a lot for watching. Appreciate you stopping by and uh, we'll catch you in the next mess.